hi <laughs> welcome to the video hello I'm Carrie thank you for being here today you clicked on this video because we're going to be talking about some bad books and I have decided this year so luckily I haven't read books that were just like incredibly bad this year I feel like I had stronger opinions from last year why why the more that I think about the book the angrier I get like it was just so st it was just so dumb so I'm actually going to be splitting up the books into funny haha and funny weird if that makes sense. So um, before we dive into that though, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Casetify. Thank you so much. So if you've ever seen my phone for the past three, four years, maybe more, you will have noticed that I have a Casetify phone. This is the most important piece of equipment when it comes to my channels, which is my full-time job. So I really trust them with this. They collaborate with a bunch of different artists. So there's thousands and thousands of different designs you can get. I obviously like the ones that have really cool designs, but you can get all different kinds of clear cases. You can customize them. This one says carry. They have an antimicrobial coating to them. They also have recently updated their UV coating to make sure that they don't yellow if you get a clear case, which is a big problem I have. They're also practically indestructible. They just released a new case called the Echo Shock, which has a dry drop rate of 21 feet. Even the normal cases, you can get up to a six foot drop. Um, they're military grade. Sorry, neighbors. <laughs> they also have really cool accessories that they sent me and I'm very excited. This is a phone strap. If you would like to get 15% off of your order, you can go to casetify.com slash carry can read um, and browse. Their cases also work with wireless charging and they're super customizable. It's just a lot of fun to set it up um, and it's something that you are probably attached to a little bit too much. So um, it's worth it to have it match your style. So yeah, thank you so much to Casetify. Once again, that link will be in the description box and let's dive in to the list. <laughs> I think I'm going to start, what should I start with? The funny ha-has or the funny weirds? I'll start with the funny ha-has. We'll end on a we'll end on an angry note. How about that? Because that'll fuel me into editing this really fast. Um, so funny ha-has. These are books that I thought were technically bad, but if you've been on this channel before, you know that I actually have a lot of fun with quote unquote bad books. Fucking books. No. What? Okay. Well, that doesn't make sense. But anyway, which begs the question, what is a bad book? If it's entertaining, is it really that bad? So that's kind of why I wanted to put it in a different category. These are books that I didn't enjoy as pieces of literature, um, but in some way, shape, or form, they kept me entertained. And I have four series for you that definitely go under the funny haha. -ha. First one being the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. This was recommended to me so much and it's by the same author who wrote the Kingdom of the Wicked series as well, um, which is pretty mind-boggling because I feel like they're incredibly different, but Stalking Jack the Ripper follows our main girl who is living in London in the Jack the Ripper time period, and she works with her uncle, I believe, um, who is a detective, and she kind of gets in on all of the cases um, and tries to solve things herself, and a lot of it revolves around the fact that she is a young, quite privileged girl in this kind of Victorian society. Um, so she has to follow a lot of these rules and she's obviously breaking all of them by being a girl who goes to crime scenes and is interested in blood and autopsies and stuff like that. I believe she actually performs autopsies. I think she's like a surgeon in training. Anyway, the thing, the thing that made this go into the funny haha -ha category is that this is one hundred percent a cheesy ass romance but it's hidden for the first two books i would say for the first book all right i think there's four there might be five the author hides it under the guise of this is like a historical fiction mystery kind of book with a little romance hinted at but then as the series progresses she just does not give a shit 
about the mystery aspect, about any kind of historical accuracy. I mean, it's just it, she just was like I want to write this romance and we're gonna add fluff around it to the point where in the last book I even forgot we were trying to solve a mystery until the end and they were like ah pull the mask you know Scooby-Doo pull the mask off of whoever it was and I was like oh that's right you guys are detectives <laughs> it is so incredibly unbelievable they just kind of make no sense um especially the second one the second one has to do with Dracula and it really rubbed me the wrong way because it focuses the villain of the story is a historical figure but that is a figure that historians have recently proven that I don't I don't want to spoil it but it was a very incorrect um kind of anti-feminist take <laughs> and I didn't enjoy it um and then they just like continuously got weirder they they go to America um, there's like a murder on a boat. I mean, it's really, it gets so silly. And like the fact that these teenagers are catching like Jack the Ripper or Dracula or all of these things, um, it's, it's just so, so silly. But that being said, she wrote the romance in a way that I was interested in it so it wasn't bad like I was entertained I thought that there were so many plot holes and I thought that it was very clear that the author just did not care about the actual setting or anything else that the plot contained other than this romance but something about it made me finish it and I didn't mind it so it was definitely like not at all what it was sold to me to be but at the same time I had a good time a lot of the time though I was laughing at like what the hell is going on I would say the book whatever number three I think whatever book is on the boat what the hell was that <laughs> um so yeah if you're looking for like a really strong as it's kind of sold to you this mystery historical fiction series not at all but if you're looking for like a relatively absurd victorian romance that has these random gory scenes of like autopsies and violent killings <laughs> stalking jack the ripper <laughs> Next up, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. So this series has been a part of my life for it seems like forever, um, which is wild because it's only a duology, <laughs> but it is these hollow vows and these twisted bonds. Um, so if you guys don't know the story, I read this book, uh, the first book, thinking that it was a standalone and I read it like the week it came out and then I quickly realized as I started to finish it that it was going to be a duology and I had to wait an entire year for the next one to come out. And this was like very much not good. It was absolutely a Akotar ripoff. It was a combination, I wish I remembered the comments, like when I described it to you, because I made a reading vlog of the first and the second one, if you want to watch, people were like, oh, so she took all the plot points from all of our favorite popular fantasies and just mixed them together. Because it was very much like Cruel Prince meets The Selection meets Akotar meets like a little bit of Shadowhunter stuff going on. It was very much like a book that I had read before. Um, and also in terms of like the twists, oh my God, I knew everything that was happening like the second a character was introduced i was like oh so this is what's gonna happen to that character this is what this character is for and it was absolutely correct the only thing that caught me was the very 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 end she threw in something that took me by surprise i'll give her that but it was absolutely just like a silly stupid time it was not good I I was like laughing at it more than I was like I think the the things that she was trying to get out of me didn't happen but um I certainly had a good time so again that's kind of what this funny haha -ha category is is just like the author swung and missed but she hit the ball somewhere <laughs> and it just kind of landed in absurd territory and I enjoy reading absurd books sometimes. So that is These Hollow Vows. If you liked any of the books that I mentioned and you're looking for something that will pass the time, it wasn't unreadable. I will tell you that. I read it. <laughs> but there you go. 
these hollow vows. <laughs> Next up were the Married to Magic books. They are not done. There is still one coming out about sirens, and I am so freaking excited to read that. Um, the who is honking? This is a deal with the elf king, a dance with the fey prince, and a duel with the vampire king. I mean, you can tell by the titles that these are going to be funny. A Deal with the Elf King was just, it, it was again very similar to these hollow vows. It was a book that I had read before. It felt like every single plot beat um, I had read. It wasn't a surprise. It was, again, with this kind of enemies to lovers thing, it was very much just a miscommunication trope in that you knew that the main guy was not really a bad guy. There was more to the story. Blah, 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 blah. So the first one was just kind of like, boring because I had read it before. The second one, The Dance of the Fae Prince, was quite funny because I I had given up. I, had, I knew what was going to happen and there were just these elements of it that I thought were quite funny once you kind of give up on trying to have a serious plot and you just kind of give in to the fun aspect. I thought that Duel Dance with the Fae Prince was quite funny. Duel with the Vampire King was just like not good whatsoever but just kind of the process of reading them in and of itself was quite entertaining i had a good time i also had a good time doing it like with you guys um so it i feel like this could be a funny series to do a buddy read with and it's also they're all standalones so you can pace yourself as you want to i'm definitely excited for the next one which i think is the last one and it's gonna be about sirens so we're gonna have like evil mermaid men and I am <laughs> so on board um for that so that was the Married to Magic series that was probably leaning furthest on the like bad writing almost unreadable the Vampire King was hard for me to get through um so that that's like leaning the furthest towards just like funny weird but it gave me some entertainment so read it with a friend I would say and it could be a good time <laughs> And last but not least, for funny haha, -ha, the series that almost killed me this year was Crave. And I read those all in one sitting. I read the, f there's four, um, and then there's two more, but that, like, if you want to know about how the whole series works, you can watch my video. <sighs> These books were so entertaining because they were so absurd. Um, the first two books, I would say, were actually, like, a fun reading experience. Um, and the next were very much unreadable and not fun to read at all. The premise is essentially we have a girl who has lost her parents, so she has to go live with her uncle, who is the headmaster of a boarding school in Alaska. The catch is, she doesn't know this, but we do. The boarding school is for, like, paranormal people, so we have, like, witches, vampires, many more other things, werewolves, you know. I believe it's described as a young adult vampire romance. It's so funny. There are so many weird ass references. It's supposed to take place in modern day, but like the author is very clearly a millennial, so she makes these weird references to like music of my middle school era. It's so bizarre and funny like reading it it's written also in our main character's point of view and she's supposed to be just like this silly teenage girl um and so reading it it's really fast to read it's so funny and she's very self-aware the author like there are many points when our main character grace will be like man if i was reading this in a book i would think the author was crazy but this is my life and so it's it's quite tongue-in-cheek so i think the first two books were like an actually really fun time in terms of just like laughing at myself like you would like you would a bad tv show um but as it progressed the author kind of tried to make it more serious in order to like make the plot make sense and so there had to be like battle scenes and death scenes and like all this stuff and she just really once it lost that just total silliness it got really bad like the writing the plot holes everything the new characters that were introduced the length <sighs> ended up being really 
really bad. So the third and fourth book were actually like a very much not good time in terms of reading. Um, so I would definitely recommend it, especially if you can buddy read it, like try and read it with somebody just so you can share how funny it is. A lot of people commented on that video that I made that the audiobook is actually really, really funny. <laughs> um, so maybe if you want to try that as well, if you're just looking for something to play in the background. But um, yeah, those, that completes my list of the funny hahas ha because I had a lot of fun with those series, um, but they definitely turned my brain to mush for quite a while and I haven't recovered from Crave. So um, there you are, my bad, so bad they were good books of 2022. <laughs> we're going to funny weird. We're going into angry carry territory. How do I even want to start this? So I had funny you should ask on this list and I decided just to take it off because it's not even worth my time talking about it. I have narrowed it down to four books, just four. That's all. Two of them I thought were just bad, and two of them were bad, but they have the added bonus of letting me down. I had high hopes, and they squandered them. So I'm gonna start with the ones that I thought were just like bad. Um, and the first one is <sighs> Small Pleasures. So I don't know where I saw um, small pleasures mention, but I know that I put it on hold and it was one of those things where past me and current me did not communicate and I just did not remember w anything about the plot. For some reason, I thought that it had some kind of fantasy element to it. No. So Small Pleasures is about a woman who lives in a very small town. Her local newspaper that she works for wrote an article about a scientist found a way to make sheep like have a virgin birth. I don't know, I forget exactly what the scientific term is, but basically they could just reproduce by themselves. They didn't need, you know, how it's like takes two to tango. No longer, all right? And they posted this article and they got a letter from someone in the community saying like, oh yeah, I did that. That was, I did that, my, my daughter, you know, I, I never had, there was never a father in the picture. I just, she just poof, came out of here, you know? And our main character is the only woman on the staff of this newspaper. So she gets handed this story because they're like, we want to write about it, but like, we need a lady's touch. And so she goes off to meet this woman and interviews her and kind of starts this relationship with her. She, our main character is very lonely. She lives with her mom and it's like not a good situation. She's like middle-aged, quite sad. She loves this woman and her daughter. And then eventually um, this woman's husband who was, came into the picture after this daughter was born. Um, and they kind of become a family. She gets adopted in and she's like this fun aunt and she always goes to their play dates and stuff. It's like, it's a really heartwarming story. Um, but in the background, she's still interviewing and, and working on this story that essentially her job is to prove that this woman is lying. Throughout this like very heartwarming, charming slice of life story that I thought was really well written, really wonderful. We have this investigation side which turns very dark and not to fully spoil it. Well, maybe I will. How about this? I'm going to I'm going to spoil it. I'm going to spoil it. Yeah. You know what? I've made that decision. This this one's going to be a spoiler. You can skip. I'll put the time stamp if you don't want it. You guys got it? You gone? Okay. As the story progresses, we learn that in fact um the mother was put in some kind of basically this takes place in like the 40s maybe um she's put in like an institution basically like an asylum she starts a relationship with a woman in there and it's like run by these nuns or something i forget exactly what happens but she has some some thing um quote unquote wrong with her right and in the process of this story like it's it's a really wonderful wholesome story but our main character eventually kind of falls in love with the husband they don't act upon it because that they like love their family so much but that's definitely like a conflict that occurs and so in the book the wife just up and leaves runs off to live with her female lover brings the daughter the daughter is so unhappy and it's like a very bad situation like the other woman 
just doesn't have I don't know if it's like the money or whatever to like really provide a life that this daughter needs and so they're kind of living in a bad situation all around also like now the husband he raised this girl like he was her like biological father so he's like heartbroken he just had his daughter basically kidnapped and stolen and his wife is gone um and then we learn that the whole pregnancy like her whole virgin birth thing isn't really true because she was raped by somebody who worked at the asylum and she just didn't know that's how the story kind of ends and you think like wow this was dark as hell but our main reporter and the husband end up deciding to start a relationship and they're going to adopt the daughter and it's going to be wonderful and our reporter has finally found this family and it's great and you think like wow that was dark but at least there's a light at the end of the tunnel and then as they're going to have their like first date and he's gonna meet the reporter's mom, he gets killed in a train accident. And that's literally the last page. Why? Why? Like, I just don't, what was I supposed to get out of this book? <sighs> anyway, I was very upset, especially because I was reading it thinking it was about like witches and I just kept reading it and I was like, there are no witches in this book. That was Small Pleasures. It was written well, like writing wise, very nice to read. The slice of life especially was just like so wholesome and, and lovely, the details. I, I love the writing style, but the plot, what? So mm, that was definitely on my list of like most unpleasant reading experiences of the year. After that, gotta give a shout out to Colleen Hoover. I would say I did read It Ends With Us and I read this in January. Looking back at my review, I was trying to be understanding and I didn't want to shame too many people, but the more that I think about the book, the angrier I get, um, especially the more that I see people reading it and promoting it the more angry I get. I really hate the message of this book. So the book follows a girl named Lily. Her father passed away and she takes this opportunity to move to Boston and like start a new life. And you know, this is something she's always dreamed of. She moves to Boston and pretty me immediately meets this guy. Um, and through him, they kind of start dating, but through him, she meets other friends and everything. And she decides to take a real leap of faith and open her flower shop which was her dream and she seems to be having a really great time she is following her dreams she's met this cool hot guy he's like a surgeon or something um she has a cool group of friends like things are really going well and then we learn that the reason that she hates her father so much because she like refused to speak at his funeral or she did speak and she like called him out on his shit anyway he was abusive um and as the story progresses i don't think this is a spoiler but this man that she's seeing also becomes abusive and the whole point of the book is to talk about how if you break the cycle right like it ends with us like because she was raised in an abusive household the chances of her becoming part of an abusive relationship is very high and if she can just break that cycle, leave that abusive relationship and raise her daughter, cause she has a daughter, raise her daughter outside of that, her daughter will not be subjected to that cycle. Her The chances of her daughter getting into an abusive relationship go down. I just do not believe that. I think that the simplification of that is really dangerous. I think that not forcing that partner of hers who was abusive to get therapy. She didn't go to the police. like. She just kind of let him off the leash. I just really, really did not like that. And I got a lot of comments and I've seen them on other videos saying like, you have to read the author's note because this is a story about her life because her mother was in an abusive relationship as well, but Colleen Hoover's mother. And so this was like a very personal thing to her. And I just don't agree with that like if you need to read the author's note to understand the message in this book first of all i think that's a problem but second of all 
this didn't feel like a one and done situation. This wasn't like, uh, this happened to me, this is my story, and this is my truth. It felt like everyone should be able to do this. If you get out of a abusive relationship, your daughter will be saved. Like, it just felt so blanket statement and so icky, and I just did not like how the other main character didn't have any consequences for his actions. Um, who's to say that now he won't get into another relationship and be abusive to that girlfriend and his daughter, who he has joint custody of, sees that as well. Like, there was just no action taken, um, that made it okay. And it, and throughout the whole book, we're supposed to see how wonderful this male character is. And at the end, it wasn't clear enough that he was really a villain. He was shown in a really pitiful light and you know we were supposed to pity him and we were supposed to be like oh well he's still a good dad he just hits his wife like over just like from beginning to end the weird references to ellen degeneres and dory and just keep swimming like there were just so many things about this book that i did not enjoy and the more that i think about it the more the angrier i get so that is definitely on my list i will say though the people who are like coming at Colleen Hoover about it being her writing style being completely unreadable. I disagree with that, I would say, especially there are journal entries in this book. I thought some of the journal entries were written really beautifully. And so I do I feel like when people jump on the hate train, they need to like jump with both feet and be like everything about this woman is sickening <laughs> and I I disagree. I think that she does have an ability to write. Um, is it a style that I necessarily enjoy? No. Is it a style that some people do? Obviously, yes. Um, so just want to put that out there that like I just mainly didn't like the message of this story and I didn't like a lot of the choices she made in terms of storytelling, but I don't want to say that she's like the worst writer in the world um, because I can think of a lot of people who are worse. So that was It Ends With Us by Colleen. And now on to the final two books, the two books that I had such high hopes for and were so, so bad. I'm going to start off with one book that is kind of hard to talk about because it's the last, not the last book. It was supposed to be the last book of a series and that is The Demon Tide. So go way back, this is like probably many years ago, maybe in 2020, I talked about how much I enjoyed the series The Black Witch and I still do. I still think the first two books of that series, maybe even three books of that series, were really good. It follows a girl who is a witch and she's raised in a very racist society where the witches hate the werewolves who hate the blah blah blahs who hate the blah blah you know she is raised kind of like on a farm just with her uncle and her brothers she doesn't really see the outside world at all she's been indoctrinated into this world of like a very racist view her uncle however is very much not um so she does have that kind of aspect to her where she's raised by a more liberal anti-racist character but the everything around her is systematically racist right so then she is about to be kind of forced into marriage by her aunt and her uncle jumps in and, and is like wait she she has to go to school she can't get married yet so in order for her to kind of put off a forced marriage she goes to university the problem with that is this is the first time in her life that she's been around people who don't look like her um so she was raised with stories of like the werewolves are you know insane and they'll eat you if you make eye contact and then she has to sit next to a werewolf in class that kind of thing um so a lot of the first book is really just her kind of unlearning her racist upbringing um and i thought that it was done quite well the other characters don't let her off the hook just because like she's had a hard life and she's poor or whatever they kind of hold her accountable to her beliefs and her actions. She also has to put in the work in terms of she has to actively go and read books written by werewolves to understand why the werewolves aren't actually evil and like realize that the perspective that she was raised with is a very kind of just tunnel vision perspective. There is great romance in it, I thought. It was like the yearning. If you like yearning, like 
oh my god she writes it so well and this is where my problem lies first two i would say three books if i'm remembering correctly wonderful i thought great really good and then she stretched the series out and i think this could have easily been a trilogy and i think she was forced into expanding it it was originally going to be four books but now i believe it's going to be five there's still another book coming out and she's not really stretching the plot there's no real plot to stretch so in order to fill up these books she's doing that like yearning formula that she does really well she's just doing it for every single character so in the first couple books there were only two povs mainly we were just following our, our main character right and as the books progressed more of the characters started to get screen time and they each get their own romance each romance is for Bidden, and each romance has this like very intense yearning thing going on. It felt like I was just reading the same three scenes over and over again. Like we would get her brother and his guard and we would read their like little yearning arc and then we would meet another character and their forbidden lover and get a yearning arc and it was just so repetitive and so boring and it was so clear that the plot was not progressing did she want to write this book it felt like she didn't um also certain characters die and like i don't want to read the next book because certain characters aren't going to be in it anymore it fell apart Part. like it fell apart and I'm so upset about it because it was I had such high hopes for this series I've like I reread the black witch one two and three multiple times like whenever I was in a reading slump I would just reread that and like I'm not a person who rereads books a lot like that's how much I enjoyed them and the fourth book was so bad I was so bad I was so angry I'm I'm getting hot thinking about it but so anyway that was the demon tide such a letdown but i do highly recommend if you like yearning and stuff like that definitely check out the black witch i don't know i don't even know what they're called but the first two for sure three maybe four don't bother just pretend the series never ends <sighs> And last but not least, one of my least favorite books of the year and with the sprinkle effect of it being a complete letdown because I thought that the premise was so good, The Cartographers, yes. So everything about this book, I thought I would love. First of all, cover, beautiful, gorgeous. Next, what is the premise? It is about a girl who works as a cartographer her father was also a cartographer and her father mysteriously dies it essentially becomes this mystery linked to maps and it felt very kind of like academia-esque where it had it so much of it takes place in a library um and i thought that the in the beginning especially of the book the kind of research and, and the knowledge about maps was actually really interesting and so for the first couple of pages it takes place in new york city most of it like the new york public library it's a mystery about maps and a murder in a library hello you have my attention right as i continued reading however the plot takes a weird sort of magical turn the actual plot loses all meaning loses all sense so what we have is our main girl who has had a falling out with her father she essentially like found a map and her father blew up fired her from her job ruined her career she can't be a part of the cartography world so now she's working at like this cheapo map company that it's like you can buy maps on ebay and they like look historical or whatever she like you know she's not she doesn't enjoy her gig so when her father dies and she finds that in his hand she he's gripping this piece of the map that she mentioned which is like a very inconsequential like highway map do you remember you guys might not but depending on how old you are um you could get those like they're like books for your car and they were like these huge highway maps 
right? So it's like not, he deals with maps that are like hundreds of years old. Why is this silly little map so important to him that he would die clutching it, you know, and like ruin his daughter's career over it? So she kind of starts to follow the clues linked to this map, ends up meeting all of her father's college friends and starts talking to them. And this is where it began to get unbelievable very quickly because she would meet, like imagine your parents, you meet an old college friend of theirs and then they just start talking about their lives, but like very intimate details of like their romantic lives. Like it, it they just told her things that I feel like adults wouldn't tell the child of their friend like it it immediately felt very odd and so she follows these clues and realizes that originally maps in order to see if other map companies were copying their maps because like it's a map it's easy to copy um map companies would put like a fake town and if another company had that town on it it meant oh they definitely copied us because like we just made this shit up right so it turns out in this particular map that her father was holding that town actually exists but it only exists if you have the map if you know where to look you know so it's essentially this like abandoned idyllic town that no one can access except for him and his college friends who were working on this map project together i think for their phds right that's cool that's interesting whatever here's spoilers Sorry, you can leave, okay? Another big part of the plot that I hadn't mentioned yet is that this girl's mother is missing and she's been missing and it's very odd that she's missing. <laughs> and what turns out happens is that one of the college friends becomes really obsessed with this map and the idea of like creating a new world and I think he also is in love with this girl's mother. I don't really understand, but basically the mom decides in order to protect this cool abandoned village that they found, she's gonna live there. And so she abandons her husband, abandons her daughter for 30 years and lives alone in this weird little village to keep it existing, to keep it safe or whatever. I just don't understand. I don't even really remember like the whole ending. Oh, that's right. There's like a weird, like turns out that guy who is obsessed with making the small town, he ends up working for this huge like Google-esque company. He's like the founder and he wants to make some kind of like GPS system where you can plug in new things and like create your own new world or whatever. I don't know. He's a villain. It's so dumb. There is supposed to be some kind of like romantic aspect as well with our main character and it just like she treats her ex-boyfriend who she's like second chance romance, you know, um, treats him horribly. Like I hated all of the characters. I thought the plot twist was so stupid. Why would her mom care more about this like empty ass town more than her daughter? Her husband, she, she never saw her husband again. Her husband got killed. She never saw him again for 30 years. Like, what the heck? I think he, like, maybe went back to visit her a couple times. But anyway, like, it was just so... It was just so dumb. And the writing wasn't even that good. Again, like, I didn't enjoy any of the characters. I liked the first couple of chapters because, again, I thought that the research, like, the things that I learned about map making was, was interesting. But everything else, once the, like, investigation started and stuff like that, so dumb. Like, I don't, it's just so dumb. So that was probably just because of all of those factors where it had a great premise, I was excited for it, and then it had such a stupid ending. That in and of itself, I think, made it the worst book of 2022. I definitely read worse writing. I think I read book, I definitely had books that I like DNF'd, um, but this was one that I had such high hopes for and it just was not good. <sighs> so now that I'm all angry and riled up, I'm gonna leave you guys here. <laughs> this was my list of worst books of the year, some of which entertained me fully, others made me really angry. So I hope I gave you a nice little spectrum um, that you can pick and choose from depending on what you would like to get out of a bad book. And I, 
we'll leave you here. So thank you again to Casetify for sponsoring this. Um, if you would like to get 15% off of your order, go to casetify.com slash Carrie can read. I trust them with my life, AKA my phone, and I've been using them for years. They have cases for a lot of different kinds of phones so definitely check they also now have cases for your ipad for your airpod etc um so definitely check them out thank you again for supporting this channel and i will see you guys next time with hopefully a more light-hearted video i have to create the list of my best of um to follow this one up so to balance the universe so anyway yeah i will see you guys next time thank you always and let me know what your least favorite books of the year were down below okay see ya bye <laughs>